Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if it's possible to extract energy from the Earth's spin using gyroscopes. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. The amount of energy contained in the angular momentum of the Earth is huge. Let's say we wanted to harness some of that power and just reduce the rotation of the Earth a little bit so that it slowed down the day by one second. Well, we could harness around 10 to the 24 joules of energy from that. Well, that would be enough to provide America with enough energy for 83,000 years about. But the question is, how do you extract some of that rotational energy into usable energy that we can use in our everyday lives? Normally to extract the energy from something spinning, you have to be external from the thing spinning and then extract the energy from it. But if you're on the thing spinning, how do you extract the energy then? Well, you would need something that's able to stay still relative to some external reference frame. And what do we know of that stays still relative to external reference frames? A gyroscope. What I have here is a gyroscope that's able to move freely in any of the X, Y, and Z coordinates. But now watch what happens when I get this middle cylinder spinning really fast so that it has gyroscopic motion. So no matter which way I spin it, it stays pointing the same direction. You can see it a little bit better when I put it on a turntable and then spin the turntable. You'll notice that the turntable just spins around the gyroscope. So this is now pointing in this direction. The gyroscope is go going to want to stay upright now. But now what happens if I spin this turntable below it? Let's turn it on and see. You can see the gyroscope just stays exactly the same way it was facing before. It doesn't want to change directions. You can see what this looks like when I spin around with the gyroscope. It looks like the gyroscope is doing the spinning. So how are we supposed to extract energy from this? Well, notice how when I was spinning around in a circle, it was as if the gyroscope was just turning on its own. So what that could mean is that if you just get a gyroscope spinning up fast enough and have it pretty frictionless, as the Earth rotates, it's going to stay pointing the same direction it was when you initially started spinning it. But as the Earth rotates around, it's going to appear as the gyroscope just starts turning. And if you had the pivot points be little generators, that means you could technically generate power as the gyroscope just magically turns around in the air. Well, this idea was so intriguing that in the 1970s, the Soviet Union started a top secret research facility in order to try to extract energy from the rotation of the Earth using gyroscopes. But after decades of research and many failures, there was no extraction of energy from the Earth's rotation. So why is it so hard to extract energy when it seems like it would be so easy? Well, let's look at this a little bit closer and see what might be the problem. We said we wanted to extract energy from this. So to do that, you're going to have to apply some resistance to the thing that's rotating. That resistance could be an electrical generator that you're generating electricity with, or you could be winding up a big spring that eventually will unwind and generate some electricity for you. But in any case, we want to apply some resistance to the rotating gyroscope. So as we're spinning around here, let's see what happens if I apply some resistance to this. You can see that it actually just falls over on its side until it's completely flat and now it doesn't rotate anymore when I rotate. Little resistance here, turn, a little more, turns, a little more. Now it's completely on its side. So it seems that all is lost after just a slight rotation of the earth where you're applying some resistance, it's gonna turn the gyroscope on the side. So now the gyroscope isn't going to apply any rotation that you can extract energy from. So you can see that the gyroscope always ends up wanting to align its axis parallel to the Earth's or the spinning axis. This is actually the way that a gyroscopic compass works. So it seems that it's not that easy to extract energy from the rotation of the Earth using gyroscopes. But we do know that you can extract energy from a certain movement using gyroscopes. I showed this in a previous video with my gyro exercise ball. With this ball here, after just an initial spin, you can actually get it spinning really fast and extract energy from it. You can see that I'm actually lighting up LEDs here. So just by doing this motion with my arm, it's extracting energy from my arm to light these LEDs. And I can keep that going indefinitely as long as my arm's moving. There's no batteries in this whatsoever. I'm applying the power to it by moving my hand back and forth like this or you kind of gyrate it around in a circle like this. 
Now the way the gyro ball works, I explained in a previous video, you can go check that out, I'll put the link in my description. So even if we could do this kind of stirring motion with the rotation of the earth, we're only doing that once every 24 hours. So it seems like it would be a really hard mechanical device to be able to spin up a gyroscope like we were doing with this gyro ball here. So this leaves it a little bit open-ended. We know that we can extract energy by some sort of movement using gyroscopes because we can do it with these gyro balls. But can it be applied to the rotation of the Earth? Well, scientists are still researching this, but so far they haven't been able to do it. Maybe it'll be one of you that will come up with a mechanism that you can take a slow turning Earth and turn it into a way to extract energy from the rotation using gyroscopes. Now before we end, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. Squarespace helps you connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send email communications, and even leverage your audience insights all in one easy to use platform. Squarespace will help you create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. You can even use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Also, you can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These are new third-party tools that can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. And you can display posts from your social profiles on your website and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash action lab to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet or hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out theactionlab.com for Action Lab experiment boxes and also my experiment book there. And also there's a really cool Musso black painting there. And thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.